5.3 Solving Trigonometric Equations, What You Should Learn. Use standard algebraic techniques to solve trigonometric equations, solve trigonometric equations of the quadratic type, solving trigonometric equations involving multiple angles, and using inverse trig functions to solve trigonometric equations. So just like it says, to solve a trig equation, you're going to use standard uh, algebra techniques such as collecting like terms and factoring. Our primary goal is going to be to isolate the trig function. Like we just want to get the trig function by itself and then we're going to solve it. So let's do this first one here. And usually give you a domain. We'll give it, we'll start with, we'll start with degrees. So 0 to 360 is what we'll start with. We'll do degree one first. Degrees. Okay. So we want to get this sign by itself. So just like normal algebra problem, we're just going to try to get the sign by itself. I'm going to add one to both sides. I get 2 sine of x equals 1. And then we're going to divide by 2. And we're going to get sine of x equals 1 half. And then from here, how do we solve it? We basically going to do how we've been solving our trig functions, but in reverse. We're going to first make a table, make a chart with all students take calculus. So I'm like, boom, boom, all students take calculus. And we're going to make triangles right triangles in correct quadrants. Correct quadrants. So here, right, sine is positive. So remember where sine is positive? Sine is positive A. Everything's positive A. And we're doing sine, so it's positive S. And it's negative here and here, right? This is our sine chart. And we're going to do lots of charts today, so don't worry about it. All students say calculus. Notice well, we're doing a positive sine of 1 half. So I'm going to make my triangle in A and S because we're positive. Next, we're going to use, we're going to fill out the sides, outsides, using a Sokotoa. All right, so we're going to fill out the sides using Sokotoa. So all I mean is that we're going to go, sine is so, right? So opposite or hypotenuse. So Angle is always the inside one. That's always your angle. Opposite to one, hypotenuse is two. So same thing here. That's my angle. Opposite to one, hypotenuse is two. And then we're going to use that. We're going to use 36 and 90 triangles, our knowledge of them, and 45, 45, 90 triangles to figure out sides, to find angle goals based on sides, right? So you have to know your 30, 60, 45, 40, because all we're doing is going to reverse, right? What happens when this is one and two? The angle is 30, because this has to be rad three. So same thing there, 30. And the last step is find angles from origin. So what I mean by that is, what angle is this guy right here? Well, this first one's easy, right? This is zero. That's the origin. And we're going up 30. So this is a 30 degree angle. So that's the first one. But I also have to find this one. That angle is right here. Well, this is 30, right? This is 180 right there. So how far is it from here all the way to there? From here to there. How far is that? We got to get to hypotenuse. 180 minus 30. We're going back 30, right? We haven't got here yet. We're 30 off. So 180 minus 30 is 150. And that's my angle. Those are my answers. 30 and 150. That is where sine equals 1 half in from 0 to 300. So that's the process. We're going to start with all students take calculus. We'll make triangles in our correct quadrants. We're going to fill out the sides using Sokotoa. Then that's going to help us figure out what angle it is. And then we just got to find the angle from the starting point. There we go. Okay, so let's do Now that we know the process, we're going to do more of them. And we're also going to do it in radians next. So this one, the, problem, the equation is a little more little more difficult. What I want to do is collect the like terms. I want to put all the signs together. So we're going to, I'm going to move this sign over there because I don't like negative signs. So I'm move sine of x. I'm going to add it to both sides. We get 2 sine of x plus square root of 2 equals 0. All right. And then next, we want to get the sine by itself. So let's subtract square root of 2 from both sides. I get 2 sine of x equals negative square root of 2. And we're going to divide by 2. We get, that's an ugly 2. Sine of x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. Like that. Now, eventually, you get so good that you're going to get so used to doing these and so fast that you can just do this in your head and like, tell me what the answer is. 
But for now, we're just going to do follow the process. Right? Eventually, you can be able to do the process in your head. But for now, let's do it. So all students take calculus. Right? Sine is positive at A and at S and negative at T and C. We actually have a negative one this time, so we're going to do T and C, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Like that. We're going to do radians, so this is 0 and this is pi. We're going to do the rest if we need them. I guess 2 pi. Probably need that. Okay, rad 2 over 2, right? So Katoa again, opposite over, over hypotenuse. So rad 2 over 2. Now, the one thing here is that's not a triangle we know, right? We don't know a rad 2, 2 triangle. But we know the trick. Anytime it's radical 2, it's going to be 45. They just rationalized it, right? They got 1 over rad 2, and they multiply both sides by rad 2 over 2. So they got rad 2 over 2. So anytime you see this, automatically it's 45. So that's my angle here, 45. 45. Now, so if I was doing this in degrees, my answer would be 180 plus 45, 225. Over here, this would be 360 minus 45, 315. But we want to do this in radians. So the key thing about doing a radian, we just got to remember that 45 degrees is pi over 4. So we're in, we're talking about pi over 4s here. So I'm going to do my same trick. This is 4 over 4. So if we're going this way, we went one further. So that says 5 pi over 4, one of our answers. If we went around again, right, 4 plus another 4, this would be 8 pi over 4. 8 over 4 is also 2, so 2 pi makes sense, right? But we haven't got there yet. We're a little short, so we're one less. We're at 7 pi over 4. And those are our answers. So 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So that's a 7. So that's a process. So we did 1 with 2 degrees, 1 with 2 degrees, radians. Let's do a little bit more. So now this one has a square, so that's one thing. But also, if you notice, it doesn't say degrees or radians. So what happens here is they want a general solution. And it sounds like it's scary, but really all it is is once you get your answer, you're going to add 2 pi n. And that just means we're going to do every coterminal angle that's involved. So 2 pi is a coterminal angle. N just says, like, all of them. So like the implication there is n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2. So that's what that implication is. So we're going to always finish it with, like, anytime it's a general solution, you're just going to get your answer and you're going to add 2 pi into it. So let's, st let's start this one. We're going to add one of both sides. So 3, 10 squared x equals 1. Let's divide by 3. So 10 squared x equals 1 third. We're going to square root it. 10 of x. Remember, anytime you square root, ah, 10 of x. Anytime you square root, the square, it's plus and minus. Now, the square root of 1 is 1, so that's going to be 1 on top. And the square root of 3 is square root 3. You know, nothing square root of 3. So we have that. So when we draw our little table here, I'm actually going to figure out where it's plus, and negative, plus or minus at, because it's plus and minus. We're going to do every single quadrant. So you get a triangle, you get a triangle, you get a triangle, and you get a triangle. I do try to make nicer triangles than I do. Um, tan is Toa, opposite over adjacent. I'm just going to focus on one of them here. One and rad, whoops, opposites. One and rad three. So this is a one, three, two triangle. So that angle there is 30, right? What's opposite one? It's 30. So this is a 30 degree angle there. And they're all going to be 30. Now remember 30 for doing radians. By the default, if they don't tell you degrees of default, it should be radians. 30 is pi over 6. So this is going to be pi over 6, so you're going to quadrant 1. We'll put pi here, so 6 over 6. One less will be 7 pi over 6. One more will be, oops, one less will be 5 pi over 6. Sorry, one more will be 7 pi over 6. Then you go around to this side, and you get 12 pi over 6, also known as 2 pi, right? So 6 and another 6 is 12. And you're one less, and you're 11 pi over 6. So our answer is going to be pi over 6. But again, we're doing a general solution. So we don't want 0 to pi. We want all answers. So we're just going to add 2 pi n. So that means we get this answer here. Then we go another 2 pi. We get, we get the closer angle. We go another 2 pi. We can also go backwards with a 2 pi. So that's what that means. We're going to get all the answers. There's no interval. So we're going to get all the answers there. Now, if you're pro and you want to catch this one too, you can instead of saying 2 pi, you can say pi. Because that would go all around and get here. So you could go 6 pi plus pi to save yourself some work. If not, just get every single one. 
and go plus 2 pi n, right? That's going to do all the ones for this one. And then we could go 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. And we could go 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. So if it's a general solution, they do want to see the 2 pi plus 2 pi n. If you're a little pro, you could go, you could save yourself a little work and, be, and go pi over 6 plus pi n, because that'll get, that'll get this line right here. And then you can also do 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. So alternate. And you get that line right there. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of work, if you notice the weight, it's just add a whole half, half circle there. Then you can just put pi n instead of 2 pi n. But that's how you do general solution. You just do the same answer and add 2 pi into it because that gets all the cultural angles. Next one, another one of general solution. So they want us to factor this one. So notice I got to get everything to one side first so I could factor this. So that's minus 2 cotan both sides. So you get cotan x cosine squared x minus 2 cotan x equals 0. So, right, if you see, like, things where it's like, well, I don't have a number, right? Set equal to zero, and then see what you can do. So, in here, I could factor these cotans out. So, I get cotan x cosine squared x minus 2 equals zero. We're going to split and solve each one separately. Cotan x equals zero. Cosine squared x minus 2 equals zero. Add 2 to both sides. Square root it. I get cosine of x equals square root of 2. Now you might wonder, like, wait, I don't remember having a cosine 2 over 1 for cosine. That's right, because cosine can't do it. Remember, sine and cosine have to be between 1 and negative 1. See, always think about the graph, right? Here's my sign, my graph of cosine. The basic cosine graph goes between 1 and negative 1. So anything that's bigger than that or smaller than that, it cannot fit. So this is too big. No solution. So let's switch that one. Where does cotan equal zero? Well, probably best to go, what is cotan? Cotan is sitting as cosine x over sine x equals zero over one. So really all we're trying to figure out is where does cosine equal zero? Because that's what the top equals. If you're not sure, you could cross multiply and you'll get zero equals cosine x. So that's really all we're solving. Where does cosine equal zero? Well, that's a unit circle problem right here. Here, here, remember when sine and cosine are one or zero, it's gonna be on the unit circle. So this is one, zero, this is zero, one, this is negative one, zero, this is zero, negative one, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Cosine, cosine is the x value, sine e, right? Sine e, cosine x. So we're looking for the x values. Which one of these? has an x value of zero. And it's two of these, it's pi over two and three pi over two. And keep in mind, they did not give us a range, a domain, so we have to do the general solution. So I'm gonna do pi over two plus two pi n and three pi over two plus two pi n. But if you notice, if you want to, you can make this shorter and just go, wait, they're on the same line. I could just add pi. So if you want, you can also just do pi over two plus pi n. That's the shorter version of doing this. That way you get all of them. So if not, you could do this. That's also correct. A little more work, but it's correct. But the shortcut is, wait, I just could do this one and add pi and keep on going around in circles. So either way is fine. But again, anytime they don't have a domain, they generally want the general solution. So you just get your answer and you add 2 pi in. Okay, how about forms and equations in the quadratic type? It looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, it's quadratic type. And anytime it looks like that, you could factor it just like a normal quadratic. Now, sometimes it's hard to see it. Like, it's hard to factor that. Like, you just can't turn to see it. So I do a little trick. So my trick here, like, if I want to factor this, is that I let the sine x equal w. It's called u substitution. I just like using w instead. So this becomes 2w squared minus w minus 1 equals 0. And for me, that's a lot easier to factor than, like, trying to factor it with the signs. So you could do a big x or whatever you want to do. 2w, 2w, it is 2 and negative 1. Oops, negative 2 and positive 1. This reduces the w over negative 1. So we get w minus 1, 2w plus 1 equals 0. Then you can either plug your sign back in or just solve it. w minus 1 equals 0 and wait till the end to plug your sign back in. w equals 1. 
um, add, subtract 1 divided by 2, so you're going to get w equals negative 1 half. And then here you do have to go back and plug your w in. So this is, plug your sine in for your w, and then sine of x equals negative 1 half. All right, and once you get down here, you still got to solve it. You're not done yet. You still got to solve the problem. So solve sine of negative 1 half. We're going to go a little faster now. We've been doing this a lot. All students take calculus. Sine is positive at a and s, but negative at t and c. So that's where I'm going to draw my triangle. Sine is so, so over h. So opposite negative 1, hypothesis 2. And from that, we should know what type of triangle it is. Um, it's a th the 36 to 90, 1 rat 3, 2. So this is 30. 30 gets the 1. 30 is always opposite of 1. If we're doing some radians, 30 is pi over 6. So that's right, 30 is pi over 6. So this is pi, which is 6 over 6. We go a little past that, we're going to get 7 pi over 6. Go around again, 12 pi over 6. A little short of that, we haven't reached it yet, is 11 pi over 6. And it is on the interval, so we're good. We don't have to like add, we don't have to add 2 pi in. I still have to solve sine equals x, right? That's its own chart. Remember, anytime sine or cosine is 1 or 0, it's the unit circle, it's the quadrantal angles. So we got, is it, we got 1, 0, 0, 1 negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. This is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2. Sine e, sine is the y value, so where does the y value equal 1 at? Right there. So our answers are 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and pi over 2. Okay. So this one, if you look at it, we have 2 sine squared plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. So they don't match. So what happens here is you want to write them all with the same trig function. Now cosine by itself, you can't do anything. But sine squared, we could change that one. If you remember, sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. So we're going to change that to 1 minus cosine squared. That way, they're all the same trig function. Everything else stays the same. Also, if you look at it, there is no domain. So we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to do a general solution. We're going to add 2 pi n to everything. All right, let's distribute. We get 2 minus 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3 equals 0. Add like terms, negative 2 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. I don't like factoring with the negative in front with, the, with my squares negative, so I'm either going to move everything to the other side or divide by negative. Anyway, you want to put, I prefer to not have to factor with the, with the Leading coefficient negatives. In my head, I usually just like move everything over. I just like add everything to the other side. So we have this. Again, you have to factor it. If you're not good at factoring it the way it is, just make w equal cosine x. So I get 2w squared minus 3w plus 1 equals 0. We're going to factor. So let's see 2, negative 3, so negative 2 and negative 1, 2w, 2w. So that's w over negative 1. So w minus 1. 2w minus 1. Right, so equal to 0, we're going to split and solve, bringing it w equals 1 and w equals 1 half. I just added 1, added 1 divided by 2. Right, so don't forget to put back your cosine. So cosine x equals 1, cosine x equals 1 half. Both of these we could solve. Cosine is positive. That all students take calculus at a and at c. So Galatoa. So adjacent one hypothesis is two. The thing I like about cosine is that that doesn't help me. I got to figure out the missing side, which in this case is radical three. So it's sixty degrees. Remember, sixty is pi over three. So this is pi over three because in the quadrant one, this would be three over three. Go around again, you get six pi over three. So this would have to be five pi over three. So there's there's like no shortcut. If I was doing my answer, it would be pi over three plus 2 pi n, right, because they want the general solution, and it'll also be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Because there's, like, no way to get a shortcut of that. Where does cosine equal 0? Sorry, where does cosine equal 1? It's kind of gives us the answer. It's right here at 0. Right, it's 1, 0. Cosine's the x value, so at 1. So I'm going to put 0 plus 2 pi n. And that's the general solution for all of these. Okay, next. How about functions by multiple angles? And what I mean by that is this guy right here. See how that's on the inside? So this is the same thing as 2 cosine 3t 
minus one. So how do we solve this? It's actually a fairly simple solution. We're gonna do our same trick. We're gonna use W substitution. Again, the most famously known as U substitution. So W equals three T. I just prefer to use W. Well, so we're gonna do that. So we can rewrite it. And the trick is we're gonna wait till the end. So ignore till the end. Then we'll bring it back. So we're just gonna solve this like normal. So I get add, add one to both sides. 2 cosine w equals 1, cosine w equals 1 half. Where does cosine equal 1 half at? Cosine is positive here and here. I think we just did this one, right? 1, 2. Yeah, so rad 3. So this is, we show how notice is 60, so that makes this pi over 3. And this is going to be, same thing we just did, 3 over 3, 6 pi over 3. So this would be 5 pi over 3. Like that. Now, so remember, we found w equals pi over 3. And also notice there's no no domain. So we have to do, we have to do um, generic solutions. We're going to add plus 2 pi n. And we're going to have 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. The thing is, we didn't solve for w. I wanted 3t there, right? So this is where we bring it back, right? We know it to the end. Now we bring back the 3t. 3t equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then how do we get rid of the 3? Well, we multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply both sides by 1 third. So all this gets multiplied by 1 third. All this gets multiplied by 1 third. And I do mean everything. So it's 1 third times pi over 3, which is pi over 9. Plus, it's 2 pi over not 2 pi n times by 1 third. So you get 2 pi n over 3. That's the answer for that one. And the same thing here. 1 third times 5 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 9. And over here would be 2 pi n over 3. That's the generic solution there. So when you do that, that's how you do it. You basically put a w there, ignore it to the end, and then bring it back and solve it. Let's do one more to make sure we know that one. Of these types, I should say. We're going to make that a w. I'm going to do this pretty fast because time is getting a little long. So we're going to get 3 tan w plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3. Right. Divide by 3. 10 w equals negative 1. Now, I don't think we've done this yet, but tan could do a negative 1, right? Sine and cosine would be a unit circle thing. It would be on the, the endpoints here. But with tan, you could do it. All students take calculus. Tan is positive to a and t, but we are negative, so we're going to be at s and c. Like that. And tan could do the fraction, 1 and 1. Right? The negative doesn't really matter because we're just trying to find the angle. And that should be, hopefully we all know, it's a 45 degree angle, right? The only thing that's isosceles is 45. 45 is pi over 4. So this is going to be pi, so 4 over 4. One less will be 3 pi over 4. And then over here will be 8 pi over 4. One less will be 7 pi over 4. So my answer is, again, generic solution. It's going to be, I'm going to have uh, w equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Now again, let's do probe move, right? If you notice, they're on the opposite sides of each other. So instead of doing 2 pi n and doing each one, we're just going to do one of them. We'll just, put, instead, we'll just do plus pi. So we'll do a little more advanced move there. That's my answer. 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. Let's go around in circles like that. So that's a little shortcut. Ah, but don't forget... I wasn't solving for w, I was solving for x over 2. So really this is x over 2 equals 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. How do I solve it? The same way we solved it last time. Get rid of the fraction times by the reciprocal. Times everything by 2. And we get x equals 3, we'll say 6 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And then I can reduce this to 3 pi over 2 plus 2. 2 pi n. And there you go. That's the solution to that one. We're going to do one problem real quick. We'll skip that one. No need it. How do you do this on your calculator? So that's the last thing we're going to do. And basically what we're going to do is y1, y2. We're going to graph them, see where they intersect, and we'll make sure the interval works. So here's my calculator. Now first thing you have to do if you're graphing sine and cosine, it has to be in radians. So I'm in radians. I'm good. I'm going to y equals. I'm going to press x for my y1. 2 sine x, 
my y2. I'm going to go to window. I'm going to fix my minus from negative pi to pi. And you just write what it says. The negative second pi is right here. And then pi for this one. Now you could go from negative 10 to 10 if you want your y. But it's be really small. Let's just graph this. See what it looks like. So you have that. And then you have this graph. You notice it's kind of small. It's kind of hard to see. So if you notice, my amplitude is only 2. So if I go up here, I can just change the amplitude to like, let's go like give yourself a little buffer, negative 3 to 3. Like that. So now we have we fixed our window. We know we're not gonna go too high and too low. And it's across here, here, and here. Those three we want to find those three answers. All we have to do is click second, calculate, find the intersect, number five. You want to get close to one, we'll start over here. All right, and you press enter, then it jumps up to the second curve, and that's the second curve, you press enter, then it says guess, and you press enter, and you get your answer. X equals we'll round to two six figs or two decimal places nine zero we're gonna do the same thing with all the rest so second calculator intersects which go back to the middle one that's probably zero 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 so let's see zero and then the last one my guess is to be negative 1.9 first one but let's double check this make sure around here and negative 1.9. And that's how you solve in your calculator. And that's the lesson.